All this week I've been talking about the pros and cons of putting spoilers into book reviews and today and tomorrow I'm going to put it to the test and see which comes out better. So today I'm going to be doing a spoiler free review of Gates of Thread and Stone by Laurie M. Lee. Let's do this. Hi everybody, it's Lydia here. So this book is a YA fantasy, it came out last year and the sequel is coming out later this year and it is essentially about this girl named Kai or Kay, I'm not really sure how you say her name, it's spelled K-A-I, um, I've been saying it Kai, it's probably Kay. Anyway, regardless of what her name is, it's about this girl who lives in this pretty run-down, crappy part of this city called Ninurta. And Ninurta is this walled city which essentially the inhabitants believe it is the last city left since this thing called the Rebirth, which we don't really know very much about. It's kind of mentioned throughout the book, but because this is uh, the first book in a series, chances are that's probably going to come into it more as the books progress but for now we just know something happened and as a result the people in this city believe they are the last city left. So as I say it's about this girl and she lives with her brother in a modified cargo container in the worst part of this city called the labyrinth and it is kind of the slums basically where everyone who just doesn't have any money lives and Kai lives with her brother Reeve but he isn't really her brother he's a sort of he's a guy who basically just found her on the street one day and she was abandoned she didn't have any memory of where she come from or who she was and he basically just took her in and they've been living with each other for quite a long time and she they called each other brother and sister so Ninurta is ruled by this guy called Carl Ninu and he can wield magic and as far as anyone knows he is the only person in the city and anywhere who can wield magic except of course because this is a YA fantasy for Kai who has the ability to control time and slow it down by manipulating the threads she calls it. It's not really overly described in the book and I'll go on to that in a second but um, yeah she basically can control time but she hasn't told anyone. The only person who knows is her brother Reeve and she keeps it a secret because no one else in the city can apparently uh, wield any kind of magic except for Carl Ninu and she's worried and Weave is uh, Reeve sorry is worried about the repercussions if it came out that she could control time. So essentially the book is about what happens when Reeve disappears and Kai with the help of this shop boy called Avon again I'm not sure about the pronunciation of that whether it's Avon or Arvon or god who knows it's fantasy you can make it up can't you. Um, so yeah essentially is it about Reeve goes missing one day and Kai with Avon um, decide that they have to find him basically and no one is going to help them so they're going to try it do themselves and this essentially just leads them onto this big massive quest and they discover all kinds of secrets and things that no one in the city ever knew. So I did have a couple of problems with this book and I only gave it three out of five stars but regardless of that and I will go into the why I gave it that in a minute but regardless of that I actually just really enjoyed reading it. It was just a fun book. You know there are some books, they're not amazing, they're not perfect, but you just enjoy reading them. So regardless of what I say next, I did really enjoy it and I am eagerly anticipating the sequel. So yeah, I'm going to be critical in a second of it, of a couple of things in it, um, but it's only because I think it could have been even better um, and I did enjoy it generally anyway. So I did give it three stars out of five and one of the reasons for that was because generally it was pretty predictable. Um, I pretty much went through the entirety of this book without being shocked once because I could see stuff coming a mile off. You know I think probably come the second book she will have got better at that and she will, it won't be as obvious and I think that was just because it is her first book so trying to just be fairly leaning on, on that and it didn't diminish the enjoyment I just felt like it was a bit predictable. That said and I'm not gonna say anything specific because I don't want to spoil it but I did find the ending very convoluted and honestly I'm a pretty advanced reader but I had to reread quite a lot of those final kind of concluding chapters because it was very there was a lot of theoretical stuff in there that it was very difficult to kind of understand to get your head around and I I just kind of felt like sometimes it was 
too theoretical and it was too out there because I don't know again this might be because it is her first book um, but I think it wasn't amazingly well written that end part because I kind of felt like I was struggling to really understand what she was saying um, and there's a lot of kind of historic, well, history, historical and mythology kind of stuff in this book um, that you have to understand to get what's going on and some of that was just a bit too convoluted so yeah I think it was just too much or maybe it was just too much too quickly I'm not sure what it was but yeah it just it made the ending a little bit more complicated than it needed to be I think. My main issue with this book however was about character development particularly in regards to Kai. In this book quite a lot happens uh, Kai and Avon go on quite a significant sort of journey in adverted commas and lots of stuff happens which kind of is really going to affect their lives and change their lives forever but as far as Kai was concerned she didn't really change throughout the entire book and this became abundantly clear especially when she was referring to Avon because throughout the entire book she has this massive crush on Avon and that would be fine if she didn't constantly keep talking about it because even in moments of mortal peril when their lives were in danger and everything was just falling apart around them she was sort of worrying about the warmth radiating from Avon's arm onto hers and how it was making her tingle and things like that and it was excruciating at times because you sort of felt like I don't you know I get that you have a crush on this guy that's great and everything but there are all sorts of crazy evil things happening around you. Why are you not worrying about that? Why are you worrying about, you know, his arm or the warmth or his general aura? Why are you worrying about that stuff? You know, that's not important. And it just got a bit too much. I mean, pretty much every other page she was mentioning these things and it was cringeworthy at times. And it really diminished her character because you know if you're going through like a massive kind of adventure and your brother has been kidnapped and everything if you're going through that then you're not going to be worrying about those kind of things so much fine have it in there mention it you know it's absolutely fine if it's a part of the book and if she has a crush on him and all that jazz fine but you don't have to mention it every other page um, and it just got in the way honestly and I felt like there was no sense of threat because the lead character who the book is told from the point of view of wasn't worried about X, Y and Z she was worried about her crush on Avon and it just diminished everything else that was important in the book and just staying on that final point for a second and I do think this is a problem in all of YA not just specifically this book but I did, did notice it a lot in this book authors I think it's great that you're writing lots more f lead female characters I think it's fantastic it's about time um, there have been so many books in the past that were all men and it's great that there are now these women leading these books it's fantastic but please 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 stop writing them as the sole female character in a book because yeah it's great that they're the lead character that's fantastic I love it but you know what I'm a girl and I have lots of girl friends you know I don't just know guys and this book and a lot of YA books in general are doing this where they write strong lead female characters who are awesome and then they just surround them entirely by men and there are no other women in the book pretty much there are like two other women in this book I think and they don't really do that much the rest of them are men and oh my god I have nothing against guys but you know just make it more diverse you can't just stick one female character in there and just make the rest of the men that's not diversity so oh my god please please just yeah Ugh, moving on so in spite of all that I'm sorry I just had to get that off my chest anyway as I said at the beginning I did actually really enjoy this book and I am looking forward to the sequel which is out later this year but I do think it could have been even better than it was and I am in a way looking forward to the sequel because I think now that she's written one book she'll have got 
kind of she'll have learnt from that and got more experience and reflected on that and hopefully that will show up in the second book. If not then my interest in this series may waver, not gonna lie. So that's it for this spoiler free review, I will be back tomorrow with a spoiler filled packed absolutely exploding in spoilers review of this very same book. Um, if you don't have a clue what's going on and you're wondering why I'm doing two reviews on the same book then I'll link you to this video, go check it out which is talking more about why I'm doing this. Anyway, that's it for me today, I will see you again tomorrow with that review, but until then, bye!